Bum, bum, bum. Da, 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 da. JRWeldy.net, and today we're uh, going to be downloading Zentl Linux Small Business Server um, Development Edition, which I already have in my downloads box here. So we're going to drag that ISO out, and eventually we'll be uh, moving it into Proxmox, which is a uh, virtualization environment that I have running on a server here in my home office and it is called Beacon. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get that started here shortly in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so we have Zentl 501 uh, Development Edition ISO on my desktop and we are going to go back into Proxmox and we'll start a uh, new VM. We'll create a new VM and we'll name this Zentl and this is uh, let's see probably a Linux 4 kernel or higher so we'll go ahead and pick that and we are going to um, oh you know what we have to do we have to actually we're going to cancel out of this and we are going to upload to our local hard drive the Zentl image. It's an ISO. We'll go ahead and select this from our desktop and it should be right here. And we will upload that to our server. While this is happening I'll talk a little bit about Proxmox. Proxmox is very similar to uh, Zen Server or uh, VMware, um, Citrix, that sort of thing. It does have out-of-the-box functionality of connecting to the whole thing from your web browser regardless of where you are in the world if you uh, forward that port through your router or VPN. So uh, it gives me a lot of functionality especially over Zen Server which I absolutely positively love Zen Server. However working on Macs most of the time uh, was difficult to do because they don't have a native installer for or DMG for Mac OS. Okay, so we are now up uh, on the server with that ISO image. You can see I have a Mumble server on here and uh, Ubuntu. So let's go ahead back over to the Beacon and now we can create that virtual machine. And I'm just going to name this Zentl Dev, and it probably won't let me use that. So we'll check. Uh, it won't do that either. Okay, that'll work. Okay. And we'll pick that ISO image. You can also use a physical CD that's in the drive of the Zentl server, or you can create a machine with no media. We'll say uh, 100 gig on that. SCSI, leave the rest as default. And I am going to go ahead and say two sockets, one core each. Gonna bump this memory up to uh, 2512. And we can also allocate uh, automatically allocate memory within a range. So it will pull from the other VMs when uh, that memory is not being utilized. Pardon me. Uh, we're going to do a bridge mode and it's probably going to tell me I need more than one NIC uh, for this machine so we'll go ahead and create that before we start it. And we'll finish that up. Uh, because this is a gateway it will uh, probably need more than one NIC. Alright, so container 105, the Zentl, which I spelled wrong, dev, is uh, now created. And we're going to go ahead into hardware and we're going to add another NIC. And this will be bridge 
Uh, we could probably leave it that. We'll leave it at, as an E1000 Intel and we will add it. <laughs> Pardon me. So now we have uh, two bridges, or um, yeah, two bridges of network cards. We have the processor, the memory, and we are now ready to boot this bad boy up. So we're going to go ahead and hit start. We're not getting any error messages down here. We have a start. Now we can go into console and we can start installing Zentl. Now if I wanted to say do this setup, this install from um, a remote location because I have the Proxmox um, forwarded through my VPN uh, and uh, security gateway. I could be on a laptop uh, in Tahiti and my boss could say or a client could possibly call me and say hey we need a new VM on our Proxmox data center and I could download that image and upload it to this server remotely and have the whole, the whole setup done uh, remotely within a short period of time. Really all it takes, uh, all the time it takes to install a, a image on a physical machine in a data center. Setting a strong password. Uh, yes, we are in that time zone. It's gonna detect hardware and uh, start the install which could be a little timely. It may ask me for uh, some other um, choices here on what I want in my default Zentl server um, during the install. So I'm gonna go ahead and record this and when we'll, then we will edit it out as we see fit during post-processing of the video. Now, of course, I use Proxmox here at my office uh, I have a couple Dell servers, tower servers that I use that are old, but they've got a lot of memory in them. Nice thing about Proxmox is it's pseudo open source. You can uh, use it if you know how to use it. You can also buy uh, numerous subscription plans to their enterprise version, which will do all sorts of updates for you outside of just a general uh, Unix base set it that it will update uh, if you needed to on, under the version that I'm using, uh, the free open source version. And while this is installing, I will be right back. I'm going to get some hot coffee. Right, so hot coffee always really comes in handy when you uh, get up at 5 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday and decide to do YouTube videos instead of sleeping in. At this point, we can really delete the ISO. This really is a uh, video really more on Proxmox than it is on Zentl. Uh, so we'll talk about some other things. I have a Guacamole uh, HTML server here, which allows me to do um, remote desktop through a web browser. I have a mail train server, which is um, email blast. I have an ISBX which is what I call it, an ISVX. It is um, WebRTC video chat, group chat, which is turned off right now along with MailTrain. I have what I call a HumHub server, but it's really kind of turned into, which is a 2012 R2 uh, server. It's really kind of turned into a C file server, which uh, allows for wide area network shared files and folders. Of course, the central dev that we're working on now. If we come up to the root of the server, we can see a summary, a nice summary of um, what things are happening here. Close that log. What network traffic is happening um, system-wide on the Proxmox host, server load, and CPU usage along with hard drive. I have 93.99 gigabyte uh, gig of hard drive space. I'm using about half of my RAM memory right now and a third of CPU usage with everything running. 
we'll go back over to uh, Zental and have a look. The really nice thing with Proxmox is this console. Uh, the console is great uh, to be able to have, not have to worry about SSH and PuTTY and all of that where it just really um, encrypts the connection in the console and allows you to do remote management on the servers, uh, the client servers that are on the host here. Zentral install may not have been the perfect choice for uh, a video showing Proxmox. Seems to be uh, pretty big, but uh, I did want to show something that would be of value uh, with showing Proxmox. This is virtual env environment 5.0-10 uh, and that hash mark beta. And I think I can do this without um, really screwing anything up on this install. Uh, we'll go into updates and we'll show you what uh, happens here when you do an update on the free version that I'm using. If you click on refresh, it's going to give you, you do not have a valid subscription for the server. Please visit visit proxmox.com to get a list of available options. There are the paid versions of the subscriptions. Uh, you can run over there and take a look at what the uh, those subs cost. I'm going to click OK and it will now start to pull those uh, Debian packages down and eventually I will get um, an error message on the paid versions of Proxmox packages. And then this stop will disappear at that point. You can close the window out from this X and uh, you will get a refresh list of those dev packages that are available for download. I do notice that for some reason when I do this sometimes it will not go through all the way to where it will allow me to close this window out I'll have to stop it and then close the window out and it won't refresh for me. Uh, it's almost like I have, to, well I really do have to do this to, to get a genuine uh, list of upgrade features. I have to come in here and close out my virtual machines then restart the host. Uh, like it, I have to free up the NIC, the NIC cards on it to uh, allow that update process to go all the way through. So let's go back over to Zenil console. Uh, time to reboot. Okay. So we'll hit continue. And I apologize. Um, my Mac is genuinely uh, running up the fans here and I'm using the internal mic to do this video because I'm too lazy to hook up my external mics. It's Sunday. And my Proxmox server here is running on a T300 Dell, uh, which is an old machine. It, it's uh, definitely got uh, some age on it, but it does really well and it's got a bit of memory in it. You know, I'm running uh, 23 gig, 24 gig in there, and uh, it definitely has some good hard drive space. We should see something happening in the console. Uh oh, there we are. Got okay, a little bit more on Proxmox. So we have content here. Since we have already used that ISO, I can remove it and make room for other ISOs that I want. And that's how quick that it drops that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Mumble also because I don't need that anymore. And that frees up that hard drive space. We also have a local LVM, which are the disks um, that Proxmox uses, and the permissions for any of those. You can add add permissions as you see fit. So um, let's go back up to Beacon, and we'll explain some of the buttons up here. We have a reset button, we have a shutdown button, and that's uh, set up for the host itself. We have a shell and we have bulk actions. Bulk start, stop, and migrate. And a help button. We have more help up here. We have a create um, KVM. We have a create 
L uh, CT is what they call it, container, and we have a log in, log out button here. Um, we have the settings for the root user. Then when we go into a VM in particular, then we all these buttons change across here, and we have um, different variations. We have stop, shut down, stop, and reset. We have the ability to migrate, clone, convert to a template, and then we have no VNC and spice uh, to be able to connect to those units. I use uh, no VNC myself. That's really pretty much the extent of Proxmox. Uh, easily upgradable, run very quickly, multiple machines. Oh, let's look at, um, see what's going on with my Zental Dev. Oh, we're done. And we can go to the dashboard. There we go. And uh, once I determine the IP address of this machine, we, it is reachable from LAN and WAN once I run it through my security uh, router. So, Praxmox, in my opinion, really great. I can't wait to see uh, what they're going to do here in the near future. As far as it took Zen Server and VMware to get where they are, I think Proxmox's learning curve has been extremely fast and uh, they've done a hell of a lot of work in a very short period of time. Really cool. Uh, look them up on YouTube. I'm not the only videos out there. Have a great day everybody. I'm Jay with JRWeldy.net and uh, hit the like button please and subscribe. I'm not in this uh, YouTube stuff to make money. But I, I definitely uh, appreciate everybody looking at my videos. So if you found this uh, helpful or enjoyable, uh, please subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you very much.